on today's show, we watch Hal as he journeys through the birth wound and discovers what has been holding him back from using his amazing gifts. And later, we go with Shayla to see the results of a four-week birth healing transformation journey and how she's now winning at life. Welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast with Janice and Sandy. Hello, everybody, and welcome. And we got a new voice today. I'm so excited. We are going to have a blast. Thank you, Sandy. This is another half hour of us eavesdropping on the very personal communication between the spirit world and souls on their earth journey. That's why we focus on dreams. If you want to know what you're meant to be doing right now at this very moment, then look no further than your dreams. Through analyzing your dreams, I reveal your potential and the obstacles you need to overcome. I'm very specific. I tell you the superpowers you have, what makes you magnificent, and the bumps in life that are holding you back. To get your dream analyzed on our show, go to dream-analysis.com slash podcast, fill in the form and submit your dreams to the show, or simply email radioshow at dream-analysis.com. That's it. That's all you have to do. All righty. I am so excited, Janice, that you are here and that we get to do dreams together. Are you ready to dive into some dreams, Janice? I'm ready. Let's go. All righty. So the first dream is from Hal and the title, Can't Get In. I am standing in the street in a very exclusive neighborhood in what appears to be California. It's very mountainous on the coast, and there are beautiful homes with very steep driveways. Must be impossible to even get in that driveway because the concrete goes straight up from the street about six feet, then levels off, trying to see where I can get in. Later, I'm on the other side, on the ocean side of the homes. I'm on a green embankment that goes down from the homes towards the water. I wonder how they mowed it. And the woman standing there says that they've almost given up on mowing. Yet because it's so hard to do. I'm wondering why they don't all get together and pay for someone just to do the whole length of the shore. Of the shore. All right, Janice, have at it. This will be fun. Okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this dreamer and why he may have dreamed this in particular. So he was part of a four-week birth wound transformation healing that I gave to a group. And this healing was intended to bring up the birth wound. Even if you don't know that you have one, you might have one. And this brought up a wound that he had no idea. And the dream showed just two days after taking the first week of the healing, what he was up against and how he needed to overcome it. So let's break it down the first paragraph. So it starts out that he's an exclusive neighborhood in California, or at least it appears to be California. Now, he's not from California, so we know that this isn't taking the dreamer back to childhood. It's taking him to the West Coast, which in dreams is often about the Dharmic path or the heart and emotions, feminine energy. So this very beginning of the dream is attempting to tell this dreamer, hey, life is great. And guess what? Life is even greater when you're on the dharmic path. But the dreamer thinks, oh no, there's mountains and there's steep driveways. But the, then the dream says, but wait, there's a coast, there's the ocean, and there's beautiful homes. So you can see the conflict, the inner conflict that this dreamer has just in thinking about what it's like to be here on earth. Can I, can I ask questions yes. now? All right. Is that where the very steep driveway comes in? Is that making, showing the difficulty? Yes. And even mountains. Sometimes mountains are about meditation or commitment. But in this case, the mountains are about this dreamer feeling like life has a lot of hills to overcome, a lot of, a lot of obstacles to overcome. And then we've got concrete. Yes. That goes up six feet. Yes. And so 
Oftentimes concrete is about the digestive and elimination system. And that is a slight layer in this dream, but it's not the major layer. The major thing is that concrete is very hard. So this dreamer is looking at the view at a house, right? From a street. And it's, and he's saying that it's just concrete and it goes straight up. It's not even a gentle incline, you know, (laughs) it's like anything that I need to overcome, such as getting into a home which is why this dream is a birth dream. So even when I tried to get into a home, it was difficult. And so the home is representing representing the mother's womb. Is that what that is? Yes. And um, when I talked to this dreamer about the view that he was having here at the beginning, it was about looking at the front door. And the front door is also a representative of, of birth. And then the six feet. I find that interesting, six Yeah. So we talked about California being about, you know, the West Coast being about the Dharmic path or even just the emotions and the heart. So this six feet is about um, also another symbol for the Dharmic path and getting into his heart. And it says something else that's really interesting. It says, right now, life feels really hard for you. And that's because it was really hard coming into this earth incarnation. But guess what? If you would just get into your heart, you will see that it will level off and it won't be that hard. It will be actually smooth. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. If he would only believe it. (laughs) (laughs) I understand that. (laughs) All righty. So what else do we have? Well, so he says, I'm trying to see where I can get in. So this whole first part of the dream is about that he can't find a way in to this incarnation. And so right at the beginning of this lifetime that this one is talking about, it was just difficult. It was very difficult. And he actually didn't get in the first time around. So this very first part is about him looking at that first attempt at incarnation and finding all of this, all of these difficulties. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's really interesting how it shows up here. Yeah. And then are we seeing hope by the second part of the dream? Yes, we're seeing some hope. It's really hope in the form of here's what you need to work on. But in the second dream, because I did bring a second dream from this dreamer after he incorporated this and accepted this message. So anyway, let's look at where it's not so hopeful. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So now we're on the second section of this dream and He's on the ocean side of the home. So what's going on there? And we've got a green embankment and towards water, all kinds of really positive things. Yeah. So it sounds really positive. You would think that this dreamer really wanted to be here from the way that he's describing life on earth, but he keeps fighting with it. So here there's, there's a reference to the other side. He says, later I'm on the other side. I'm on the ocean side of the homes. So this is saying after that first incarnation, he noticed suddenly he's on the other side. So he didn't thrive. He didn't survive. And he's on the spiritual side right now, which is what the ocean side also represents. You know, it represents getting into life, but it's also representative of spiritual life. So now he's looking at it from the other side and he's allowing himself to have perspective on what happened there. And he sees that green embankment, which is going down towards the water. So it's going down from the home, which would be, you know, mother's womb. And he sees green, which represents the heart. And like we said, the dharmic path and all of those things that he needs to overcome now. And it's even showing going downward. So a couple of layers on here are that he needs to go out of his head into the heart in order to reach dharmic path. And um, it's another birth symbol. So it's saying um, when you move from a place of high um, to a place of low, you're going down onto the density of earth. So anyway, I just, I, I just think it's interesting when multiple layers are shown, but it all ultimately shows what the dreamer's about. Yeah. So he's got a woman in this. So is that reference to mom? Yes, this is a reference to mom and how she just sort of showed him how difficult life is. So this is where he would have picked it up while he was in the womb. 
and certainly in the previous time when he tried to incarnate is, you know, where he first experienced how difficult it is. But then he saw when he did actually incarnate that mom just kind of gave up. And, you know, this happens for any variety of reasons. It doesn't go into detail in this dream, but it says that mom felt like things were way too hard. So then he took on that energy when he came in. Well, I think it's interesting that he wants them to get together and pay. And he's wondering why they don't. Yeah. So um, so the dream is asking this dreamer in a gentle way. All right, buddy, time to get it together, right? But it's also saying end the separation, end the separation between your heart and your head. So it, you can do this by going more into your heart, by trusting your heart more, by realizing that you need to do some healing in this area. And even paying the um, mention of money here in this dream is about asking him to put energy toward going, getting onto the dharmic path, getting into his heart more, and that it will pay off in the end. Well, that is really an amazing dream. I'm excited to see what the next dream is. Yes, I'm excited to see him start to incorporate these messages. Cool. So our next dream is from Hal again, and this one is called Red School Bus. I was walking down a divided highway, and a red school bus came up alongside where I was walking. It came to a stop and then went in reverse and back down into a median between two lanes of opposite traffic. It started going really fast in a sway between traffic until it was nearly a half mile or more away. Then it turned into the other lane and came into a rest stop on the other side. Later, three girls got out of a car and laid a memorial in the median of the road and then got back in the car. Oh, that's very interesting. There's a lot in that one. Yeah, <laughs> let's see how we break it down then. So right away, you see the color red in this dream. And so we know that the dreamer is working on the base chakra, which is a major chakra for the birth wound healing. And we also see the school bus, which um, in our birth dreams, we will have our gifts show up, um, especially those gifts that we're meant to be bringing into this lifetime and using. And this dreamer has symbols of leadership, healing, and channeling all over his dreams. So this is no different. So he's walking down the divided highway. So first you hear the word divided, right? So you you know he's still divided. The previous dream said, hey, let's all get together. And in this dream is saying, oh, I haven't, I haven't quite incorporated that yet, but that's okay. And the highway is all about the heart and the circulatory system, you know, because it has a two-way flow. So it's all about that. So we know this dreamer is still working on getting into his heart. So this red school bus came alongside where he was walking. And what I want to point out about this piece is in the birth wound healing, what happened was I journeyed people backwards into the birth experience. So it was really interesting to see how this bus, which sort of represents the birth experience, how it came alongside him walking in just his regular life. So he's just walking in this dream in his regular life. And this bus, this symbol for the birth experience came up and stopped and said, hey, look at me. And then it immediately went into reverse, which is what we did in the meditations. So it backed down this median into traffic and it was going really fast in the swell between the traffic until it was about a half mile or more away. And what this tells us is that this is the birth canal, the median, the swale, that's all about the birth canal. Now, it might not always be that way in dreams, but in this particular one, when I channeled on that, that's what it was. And it does make sense now as we're talking about it, that that's what it would be. So it's saying, I'm going backwards into the birth experience, and I'm going to see what I need to do. What do I need to heal from this? And even the reference of the half mile, were you going to ask about that? Yes, I had to. <laughs> What's going on with the half mile or more okay. away? <laughs> yeah, I was curious about that too. And when I channel on that, what it was about is that 
the experience in the womb is like being halfway here and halfway not. So we are a fetus and we're having a spiritual experience, but we're also having an earth experience. So this is just representing being sort of in a halfway house. Wow, that's cool. (laughs) Yes, I love the symbolism in this dream. Yeah. Okay, so then what happened? What happened to this bus? So then it came to a rest stop on the other side. So you hear again, it talks about being on the other side. So this symbol for for that birth that he didn't thrive came to a rest and it went to the other side. So he didn't thrive. But what happens is these three girls get out and they lay a memorial right there in the median, right at the place where the wound is. And I just love this part. And when I talked to the dreamer, he said that he has two sisters and a mother. And so when I channeled on this part, they said that the three girls represented healing that his family also received from him taking the time to memorialize this sad event that happened to everybody. Wow. And then they got back in their car. Yep. So that says that he's now ready after having recognized this and healing from it, he's now ready to move on. Wow, that is amazing. How many sessions did you do um, for with him uh, doing this work that you're doing? Tell yeah, us a little bit about it. It's the birth wound transformation journey. And it works by accessing forgotten traumas, not in a way where we are able to necessarily talk about it because we don't know. They, these are our traumas that are entrenched in us and they feel like we've always been that way. We've always lived with this trauma. So it doesn't feel like a trauma. It feels like a personality quirk or just some way that we've always been this way. And for this dreamer in particular, he always felt like life was hard. He always felt like anything that you had to do, it was going to be a struggle And, you know, eventually you'll get over it, but it has to be hard. Otherwise, it's not tangible and it's not real. So those are the kind of wounds that show up in the birth wound because we don't we don't know. We've just always lived with it. Right. And we wouldn't know any different. You're right. Yeah, exactly. We don't know any different because that's how we always are. We just assume, you know, oh, that's that's just me. I'm just an introvert. And that's just me. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That might be a birth wound. and you might be able to overcome that if you want to feel more comfortable in social situations or you want to be able to have joy and celebrate life. If you can't figure out why you're not doing that after you have everything, let's say you have a good job, you have, you know, you've raised your family, you're not in want for anything, but yet you still don't feel joy. If somebody right. asks you, are you happy? You have to think about it. And you, you know, maybe your answer is, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hesitation, not wanting yeah. to really own up to the fact that maybe there might be more or they're, they feel like they're missing something. So how many sessions is this um, healing that you've been doing? So they had a total of four sessions. So we have four live sessions and we record it. And then they listen to that at least once a day. And I even tell them, Listen to it at night. Make sure you have your headphones because it incorporates gamma frequencies in the background and it it allows those frequencies to hit on those forgotten parts while they're as close to the dream state as possible. So I say, do it right before bed. Do it when you're tired. And in fact, we do the healings in the evening because I want them to be close to that sleep state where they can resist as little as possible. They listen to that and um, they have dreams and then they share their dreams. The first week I had three dreamers that had very similar dreams that went back into a symbol for the birth canal, such as, such as in this red school bus, but some went into tunnels. They went backwards into tunnels They went to retrieve lost keys or forgotten conversations. It was just amazing. Powerful Powerful and amazing. Wow, that's awesome. And so we can see that this has really worked on him 
because he is now ready to move on. And the dream exactly. is showing that just so cool. Yeah. And after this, his dreams were filled with his gifts, like oh. amazing new ways that he saw that his gifts were going to work. Wow. That is so awesome. So do you have a plan to run that again in the future? Yes. Um, my next one starts February 4th and it's going to be every Sunday at seven Eastern. Lovely. Well, thank you. Cool. All righty. I'm excited to see that and see how this goes. Uh, so our next dream is from Shayla and she titled her dream winning. Oh, I like the name. I was snowboarding. I did snowboard when younger, but busted my left arm pretty badly and haven't done since. I was doing two events initially and won, but I joined another event because I was winning. As we went by, the crowds cheers and all waved high when we went by. We waved back. It was very festive. I like this dream a lot. Yes, and the dreamer liked it too. And I liked it also because you can see that it came after the last week of the birth healing wound, and it clearly shows how she's winning. Yes. And we don't get these dreams very often, so that's why I wanted to share this because usually after we finish one healing, then it just moves on to say, here's the other thing that you need to work on. But this one went straight into saying, Hey, time to celebrate. And I just love that. Yeah. So, so what is the snowboarding? Let's, let's dive in and, and do a little details. Yeah. So what is snowboarding? It's going down a hill, right? So mm -hmm. remember in the other dream, we had the, the visual of the embankment. So we know that this is about birth because she's moving from a high place to a low place, even though she doesn't say it. Of course, we don't really want the mention of snowboarding, but in a way it's okay. Why don't we want the mention of snowboarding? Because it's a cold place, right? There's snow, it's a cold place. And usually that means that we weren't met with a warm reception at birth. Well, this dreamer, that it's true for this dreamer as well. And she will be starting soon a, another healing that per that addresses the feminine energy. So she is going to be working on feminine energy soon anyway, and that's okay. But this dream is about healing the birth wound. So she, she snowboarded when she was younger, but she got hurt. And so she hasn't done it since. And I think that's an interesting detail to add to this dream because that happened in real life. And what the dream is saying is that when she gets hurt, when she got emotionally hurt at birth, she didn't want to try anymore. She was done. Wow, and, that is intense. Yes. And the other layer of that is that when she puts her emotion into things, she gets hurt because she was met by mom with a cold reception. And so the, the dream is working on both of those levels, but let's focus on the birth part of the level. So it says she's doing two events initially and she won. Well, what's that about? When I channeled on this, what they said was that this dream is bringing in parallel existences, the memory of parallel existences from when she did win at life. Excellent. Because, because she needed to see that life is great, that she can win at life and that it's fun. So here she has the memory of two other lifetimes where she won. And now she's saying, I joined another event, which is this event, her birth. And she said, I joined it because I was winning. And she went by and the crowds cheered. Everybody waved when she went by. I can guarantee that this dreamer did not have this type of dream at the beginning of this healing. It was more about her birth wound was her mom was rushed to the hospital. Her dad didn't believe that she was in labor or her dad um, thought she, he had a lot longer time. And he went to get a cup of coffee and he was just strolling and taking his time. And so this dreamer went into life feeling like she may not be safe. She may not get the care that she needs. So she didn't feel like she could win at life immediately. And at the very end, she says it was very festive. And festivities are all about the birth celebration, which is the most important celebration in our life. So here we have the dreamer celebrating her birth. 
Wow. You can see the huge change. That is amazing. So how did she feel after this dream? She didn't feel anything at first until we went over the dream. (laughs) (laughs) But she, you know, it was giving her chills. It completely resonated. She felt that she actually was winning. And like she had a renewed sense of being grounded on the earth plane and enjoying the experience that earth has to offer. Wow. Completely changed her life. That is so awesome. Gives her such a nice place to jump off of and be happy and just move forward in joy. I love that. So I, you are you over the moon by what you've been seeing in people's dreams now that you've um, facilitated this uh, healing event? Yes, absolutely. I was at the beginning of it. I didn't even know if it would work, (laughs) but (laughs) I got all the clues in my dreams. And I even had another of Michael's graduates channel on my dream, Melissa Brunheller, because I couldn't figure it out. (laughs) I couldn't figure out my own dream. But in the dream, it talked about the importance of gamma frequencies and the fact that I can move out of my body to allow people to have a healing, like an out-of-body healing experience. And suddenly I understood how it needed to work when I did it. And I think it was the next day I set up this healing and I didn't even know who would come, but I ended up having eight people. And yeah, so and so I'm just really excited to do the next one. I want to do it now, but... (laughs) I, you know, I tend to do a lot of things. So I told myself, let's wait until February. (laughs) That's fabulous. This is real exciting to see. I am so glad that you listen to your dreams, (laughs) which is so important from our show here. You listen to your dreams, you followed their advice and look at what you've been able to accomplish just by doing this. That's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. I mean, the Ashling School, Michael, you, Sandy, you've had so much to do with my own journey. And um, so I certainly wouldn't be in this place helping others through the birth wound unless I did a lot of work myself. And I did that with you all. And you all have seen me at my absolute worst. And it brings me great joy to be able to lift up and help other people in the same kind of way. Wow, that is so awesome. Well, I am so excited. Well, thank you, Janice, for being on the show today. You did a fabulous job, and I'm really excited to hear more about your healing course or your journey course that you're providing people to go back into the birth wound. And um, anyways, that's all I have to say. So have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.